All right. Hey, y'all. Thank you for joining us for our Beef Brunch News Update for Tuesday, June 13th. Um, I'm, we've been on here for just a few minutes chatting and I have not had Internet issues. And then it just kind of glitched for a second. So hopefully y'all won't lose me. Um, but Lee and Vince take over for me if I happen to pop out. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Vince for our Central and Southern Louisiana update. Well, thank you all for having me on this week. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks or a couple of updates that I was was not participating, but um, it sure is summertime, you know, in, in the central part of the state and uh, indications are from the weather forecast that we're going to be in the upper 90s uh, through the end of the week, uh, which is extremely hot. You know, um, you know, cattle cattle don't do well in this, this hot weather. You can have all the Brahmin influence you want in them. I mean, they just don't do well uh, hunting shade trees and fighting the insects and uh, we're, we're in desperate need of some rain. Uh, it's it seems like it's a it's a broken record, but it goes from from an extreme to one extreme to the other. We were wet early, and now we're we're we seem seem to have dried out really really bad. I had a producer in my office here just a few minutes ago, and he said I need rain bad. And, and I've heard of some situations where people are starting to feed some hay. Some people haven't made any hay, and I'm one of those. Uh, it's it's we had a cool start. Uh, didn't have the right situations to get fertilized out in, in a timely manner. Got hay field sprayed and things dried out. And now the weeds are popping their heads back out. So it's it's like a, a double-edged sword that never never ends, but and never never seems to be just right. But hopefully that that weather situation will change here in the near future. We get the rains we're we're needing, but uh, it's not looking good in the next 10 days. Um but the market, uh, I'm sure one of you guys will cover the market situation, but uh, a lot of enthusiasm from the producers out there uh, that are selling calves at you know some four to five weights at at above 250 a pound. They they liking that pretty well. Um, you know, getting some some expenses paid and uh, hopefully not overspending on the backside of selling calves. And um, we hear some astronomical prices coming, especially on these uh, load lot sales uh, where you know a whole trailer load can be sent out. And uh, I'm sure Lee has some experience with. Uh, Superior's recent auctions, but you know I'm hearing that that was pretty strong, even for some of the cattle down in in our part of the world. So uh, that's always good to hear that uh, we we turn it over some better money than we have been. Um, even uh, watching the national news, uh, which is not always a a thing you can take home and write about, but they said uh, you know their, their one of their headlines one day last week was that uh, you know meat prices were getting higher because there's fewer cows in this in the country. So uh, I think that's that's a lot of truth to that. Uh, as these prices started to, to edge up, uh, some cattle producers have gotten out of the business or called down to get rid of some older cattle and keep some young cattle. So it's uh it's, it's very interesting to see where where it's going to go as as a whole. So, um, well, we definitely need uh, weather to cooperate with us. Uh, fertilizer price is still reasonably, I would call high. Uh, most blends are in the 600 plus up to 700 dollar range, uh, where we need to see that come down some. Uh, to get things done and that has deterred uh, a lot of a lot of folks who want to you know get rid of some cattle uh, just because things are so expensive and it goes without saying the cost of fuel is down com considerably from last year but uh, parts and getting parts and uh, getting things done has been uh, a monumental task in a lot of cases uh, it seems like uh, you know most of the dealerships whatever brand you choose to use is uh, it's a it's a, a challenge of getting parts even the simplest things, uh, things that should be stocked, they don't have. So uh, you, you lose a day or two of valuable time, uh, whether whether you got crop in the field or hay on the ground in, in the in the cropping system or, or in, in a cattle operation, uh, downtime is is never productive. So uh, it's just an aggravation that I think people have kind of at the end of their wits with uh, trying to, to struggle to get through. Um, but the, the promising side is that, uh, you know, some of the commodity prices have, have leveled off and even kind of gone down a little bit uh, to kind of support, uh, um, you know, the feeders being able to feed cattle uh, a little bit more efficiently and cost efficiently, should I say. And uh, so hopefully hopefully that market continues into the future and and we uh, we can sustain uh, our industry and, and moving forward. Um, most bulls, uh, some of the, uh, you know, fall breeding season has come to an end. Uh, I noticed that several people pulling bulls here over the last uh, two weeks and, uh, you know, the spring cabin uh, breeding season is upon us and that'll, that'll go for about another month now. So um, 
But I guess a word of caution uh, with, with this high heat, uh, you know, check on those herd bulls. Uh, we all know what good herd bulls cost. Um, you know, the old saying is a, a good herd bull is, is more than half your calf crop because if he only makes one crop and he's not there for the next one, he, he didn't he didn't pay his weight. Uh, so uh, keep keep a good good eye on, on your herd bulls and make sure that they have what they need and they're not extremely far from you know, good fresh water and uh, ample shade because uh, it's you know we in South Louisiana we woke up with 80 degrees this morning and 90 97 percent humidity. Uh, that's 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 enough to take any anything out of a population. So. Hopefully that you know we we're not overspending on our bulls and certainly taking care of them when we do have to overspend uh, to get a good one. So um, cows, you know, there's a lot of cows probably being palpated and worked right now uh, to know cow, kill cow prices are still high. So people are uh, taking advantage of that market uh, to get you know that dollar fifteen dollar twenty uh, fat cow across the scale. You know, to get some bills paid. And if she's not in production, we we say this time and time again. Uh, if they're not in production, get them out of the herd because they're just costing you of the eating grass and and get into a haystack later this fall. Um, but uh, we're all hoping for, for a better weather situation. And we're in the, the dog days of summer and say like one of our counterparts, uh, Dr. Ron Strahan, it's, it's definitely Africa hot out there these days. And uh, things are growing. We've got grass growing where we're getting some showers, but we, we need a general rain area wide. And I, I hope it's not a hurricane situation be, because that's upon us now. And we always fear that from now until uh, through October. So um, we had a little kick up of mosquitoes here uh, before this high heat and dry weather took a hold. Uh, that's one positive thing for the dry conditions. It helps to knock down the mosquito population, some and other insects. But um, hopefully we get get the rains we're needing. So it's about all I have right now, Ashley, and and hopefully uh, we we get those much needed rains and and move on with our our production year as far as hay and. Our row crops are, are in dire need of some rain. We've got a lot of young soybeans out there, and our corn crop is looking good until we got into this high heat situation within the last week. Uh, we've seen a lot of corn rolling up out there, and sugar cane was growing good. We're down in the southern part of the state, some of us, last week for the county agents meeting, and uh, crops look pretty impressive down there. Uh, but we need to keep getting rains to keep those crops going. So uh, hopefully that, that plays into, into our weather situation in the near future. So with that being said, it's kind of all I have at this time. Thank you, sir. Uh, Lee, I'll turn it over to you for the North Louisiana update. Thank you, Ashley. Glad to be with you all here today. Uh, hot and mostly dry as words up here to describe the weather pattern. Um, had some some rain in um, in uh, intermittent areas and a little bit of storm damage. Uh, reported to uh, uh, over the weekend and in the last few days. Um, talked to a producer yesterday, in fact, that got some pretty good storm damage from some straight line winds, some pr pretty heavy thunderstorms rolled through, but it hadn't been uniform, folks. It's been, uh, you talk to one producer and they might have gained a, a inch of rain over one cell on a thunderstorm, and you could go five miles down the road and find somebody that got a two inch rain and by two inch, I mean two inches between the drops. Um, there's just not, uh, uh, we're, we're in a deficit on rain. Uh, we desperately need need a good region wide soaking rain um, in, in the neighborhood of an inch to two inches across across the region would we'll just do wonders, folks. It, it, it would really help out as far as the forecast goes. Looking at more of the same, a couple of days of pretty decent rain chances up in our corner of the state, and then it tails off and the heat's on again, folks. Um, just just can't stress enough how how, how miserable it's been, really, frankly, for cattle, like Vince was stating. Uh, it's been the same way up here. We may not have experienced quite the humidity level, but we were awful doggone close to them. And uh, shade is a valuable commodity right now. You see a lot of cattle that are ponded up, trying to trying to alleviate some heat, and and uh, and of course the the flies, folks. These flies are tearing us up. It, I don't have anything to back this statement up, but I have seen fly populations in the last week like I hadn't seen in a long, long time in in this part of the the state. Um, talked to several producers over the last few days that are desperately throwing everything but the kitchen sink at them trying to control 
these uh, fly populations. I know Ashley mentioned this in an update we had back a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago now. When we first started talking about these fly pressures, um, folks, rotate those active ingredients, please. Uh, if you're, if you're, all you're using is one permethrin-based product, then uh, you, your chances of building resistance pretty high. And, and resistance is a real thing amongst these flies. And it, it'll be a real thing for your neighbors and your neighbor's cattle as well that they'll have to deal with. So as, as best you can within reason, rotate these uh, different products. Talk to, and that, that goes to for fly tags as well. Another reminder on these fly tags, folks, I know we're nowhere near the end of the season, but it's all, always best to remove those fly tags from those cattle in the fall. Uh, that just helps to avoid resistance as well. Uh, a lot of back rubbers being used and, and just anything. Uh, we've, we've even got some people, uh, one or two of the folks that I've talked to have been pinning cattle with the sole purpose in drenching them uh, in different products, just, just trying anything and everything to try to alleviate this fly pressure. Talking about another particularly pesky insect that thankfully we haven't seen any signs of is the armyworm, and that's pretty much because of the dry conditions. Now, I'm not saying there hadn't been any army worms anywhere. I'm sure if I combed the whole of North Louisiana, I might find somebody that had dealt with the infestation, but I haven't heard of that just yet. Um, but I, I tell you, with these rains in the forecast, be be on guard and be ready. And just, just as a reminder, you know, talking about that dirty R word again, resistance, uh, seeing resistance in army worm populations as well, folks. Get with your local county agent one of us we'll talk about some different products and different options uh for control methods on those army worms um if it, if you have an outbreak on them. we won't be ready before that outbreak not much in the way of cattle working is going on in this part of the country other than like i was stating for fly control purposes solely but also shipping cattle boy the the exodus continues on uh on, on fall born calves most of those i would say have probably the, the true fall born caves specifically those september caves they're gone uh for the most part i imagine there's still some some late fall season caves that are still on the cows you know but pretty much anything five weight and above uh, they they made a trip to town and on that topic vince was start talking about these markets and and specifically these cull cows and killing bull markets they continue to be high as a castback, and we continue to see people shedding cows. Got involved in a in a pretty in depth discussion on when we're going to rebuild the national cattle herd. And uh, frankly, I'm maybe not as qualified as I need to be to, have to to state all this. But what Vince was talking about about input costs and and weather concerns, I think it's going to slow down building the, the nation's rebuilding of the cattle herd. When we get to this point in the inventory cycle, what you kind of look for is heifers on feed, but you also look at your uh, slaughter cow levels. And, and folks, we're still killing a lot of cows. And of course, a lot of them are going to be unproductive or open members or cows that truly need to be gone. But I guarantee you that doesn't make up the whole population of them. We're still, we're still selling a lot of cull cows. It's going to be hard to recover our inventory uh, as long as we're shedding cows at the rate we still are. So anyway, uh, since I broke the subject of markets, I'll kind of give y'all the range of averages on, on data. Um, pr pretty strong data set this, for this report, but folks, by the way. I always try to tell y'all whether I have a lot of confidence in it or a little. And just as a further disclaimer, um, th these are self-reported prices, folks. Uh, we don't have a, a, a statewide official uh, market report so i uh, have to trust what uh, what was self-reported on this and I, I i trust all these local auction barns that i'm able to get these reports from but just want to make mention further though that quality is king folks and without a market a usda market grader sitting at each one of these sale barns and um kind of breaking up the prices as as related to quality as far as number ones and number twos, there's no true way to get a picture of the market. And, and just as an example, you can have a spotted up steer 
come through and and weigh 500 pounds and then you can have a a, a, a sure enough fancy black or or charlay kind of a, a gray hided calf run through and they're both 500 pounds and they're both going in the average folks so you, you just don't know um uh, until you have an official grader in there but anyway i digress and i'll jump right straight into it five to six weight steers 500 600 pound steers the range of averages is a dollar 34 to 246 Vince was talking about those two dollar and fifty cent calves uh, uh, price per pound of course uh, the highest report was two dollars and fifty seven cents a pound uh, there was a couple of others in the 250s that uh, that influenced that average but the average on five to six weight steers dollar thirty four per pound to two forty six per pound on the heifer side of things range was a dollar twenty five to two twenty three. Highest quote realized was two dollars and thirty seven cents. Cool cows, uh, going to jump right into that. Uh, the right average of ranges is sixty nine cents to a dollar twenty one. The highest quoted price was a dollar forty. That's a pretty substantial price on a on a cool cow. Of course, she the argument could be made she was probably on the lighter end of things. Could have been bred, and somebody wanted to take her back home, even though they were selling her by the pound. Who knows, but that's still a pretty good price for the person that sold that cool cow. Uh, bull side of things, 72 cents to a dollar twenty-seven on bulls. Um, as far as the replacement cow market, um, kind of a wide range here, folks, but I'm going to report it just as it is. Uh, the range for the bread side of things, the bread cows, replacement cows, three ninety-six. To seventeen hundred and ten dollars. Uh, the highest quote realized was twenty four fifty per head, and the auction market that reported that did include a note that that was on some really fancy bred heifers. Just, just for reference, on the pair side of things, range seven forty eight to seventeen hundred ninety seven dollars per pair. Uh, once again, the the, the quality conversation. Uh, matters a whole lot on these replacement cows, folks. I've said this every time I've reported this. We're not sitting there watching as all these bred cows and pairs are run through the ring and sold. It could be a fancy week, uh, a week with a lot of fancy cattle, you know, some F1 type tiger stripe uh, bred heifers or, or pairs, or it could be just a kind of a, a planer week with some uh, with some planer type cattle, and that can throw the averages pretty significantly one way or another. The final thing that I'm going to mention about uh, today is uh, Ashley said over the past couple of reports, kind of a slow time for activities is on the beef side with uh, LSU Ag Center due to the hot, hot weather and folks trying to make hay if they've got any to make. Uh, but have a, one event announced that I'm going to go on and, and spill the beans on. Uh, DeSoto Parish is having a Cattleman's Field Day on July the 7th, and that's going to be at the Branch Ranch. Ashley's going to have the flyer for it if you're interested. I imagine she was going to talk about it, but I went on and stole her thunder. With that, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I was going to let you keep talking about it. All right. Um, we'll move in. I'll do markets first and then we'll do a few more events. But um, so national market slaughter volumes for this past week were 600, 671,000 head, which is up approximately 48,000 head from our previous update two weeks ago. Choice box beef closed the week at $324.49. That was up $23.13 compared to our previous report. And the choice select spread was $22.98, which is an increase of $5.21 compared to our previous report. Um, and y'all, I know I've said it the last couple of times, but what I've started doing is just comparing to two weeks ago instead of the previous week. Um, so you're hearing any comparisons are going to be to our previous news update that we gave for y'all. Reported in the National Weekly du Direct Slaughter Negotiated Purchases Report on a confirmed 109,811 head. In the Texas Panhandle for the week, live purchases traded mostly $5 to $10 higher at $185. In Kansas, live purchases traded mostly $6 to $8 higher at $186. 
In Nebraska, Friday saw negotiated cash trading slow with light demand, but for the wheat, purchases traded three to six dollars higher at 189 to 192. In the Western Corn Belt, live purchases traded mostly three to five dollars higher at 190. For our five weight steers, um, again, this is an average between Mississippi and Oklahoma's reports. So five to 550 pound medium and large ones and twos sold at an average of 259. That is up $17 from our previous report. And then our 750 to 800 pound feeder steers, medium and large ones and twos, again, an average between Mississippi and Oklahoma, sold at an average of 210. That is up $12 compared to our previous report. Um, the guys talked a lot about cold cow prices. So lean cold cows, um, thin condition, end of the week at 91 cents, that's up four cents. The boning utility, which is a BCS of five to six, ended at uh, $1. three. that's up seven cents. And then the breakers, which are your higher conditions, ended at uh, $1. three as well, which was up nine cents from our previous report. Moving on into the feedstuffs, Again, compared to two weeks ago, soybean meal is down $5 a ton at $4.27.20. Soybean hulls are down $15 at $1.25 a ton. Rice bran held steady at $200. Cottonseed meal is also steady at $362.50. Whole cottonseed is down $40 a ton at $275. Corn gluten feed meal, the 60%, is down $85 a ton at $640. DDGs were down $17 at $245 a ton. And corn, um, this is the new crop price, was up 38 cents a bushel at 5.28 a bushel. Lee already mentioned the um, Cattlemen's Association field day that's coming. I was trying to find the flyer here. Um, so again, Friday, July 7th, uh, Josh Sally's asked that registration occur by June 30th. So we do need pre-registration so that we can plan lunches which means that you get lunch if you come. Um, so pre-register with Josh. Uh, his email is jsally at agcenter.lsu.edu um, or his number 318-872-0533. I've got both of those listed in the podcast and video descriptions. Um, as Lee mentioned, it is at the Branch Ranch in Mansfield. The topics are sprayer calibration demonstration, um, bull development program, Go Beef Heifer Development Program, I'll give kind of a report of the last two years and go over that. Um, heifer selection, NRCS programming, and an equip update. The other event that I have on here to discuss real quick um, is the second annual health summit with Louisiana Cattlemen's Association. Um, so this is going to be on campus in Baton Rouge. It's Friday, July 21st and Saturday, July 22nd. Um, they're going to have different stations, which will include improper injections, meat lab, uh, a meat lab, hay quality, parasites, reproduction, and other topics. Uh, for more information, you can contact Shay at LCA 225-428-7163. And I've got a little bit of that mentioned in the video and podcast description as well. Since Lee brought up the fly control, um, I know I posted this in the last news update, but I did go ahead and link two videos that we have on that. So if you weren't listening to us a couple of weeks ago, um, I plugged in a webinar from Jason. Uh, the webinar was back in 2020, but all the information is still relevant. And then also a video, a field day video, excuse me, from Vince on uh, horn fly management. So I've got both of those linked as well um, if you want to check those out. All right, Lee, you let me forget stuff last time. Did I forget anything this week? Good to go? Okay. All right, y'all, um, we will see you again in just a couple of weeks.